red star, you know, that's the location that I'm showing you. It, it's just a, a long Blossom Hill. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a retail area, but um, you can see it's still really open. It's not, it's not really a transit village yet. So we have a long way to go and it would be better to, to build the density there um, to create, a, a, you know, the, and get a, a, a working transit backbone before we uh, move out into the more suburban areas. Once we have a good transit backbone, then maybe we can, you know, expand it out into the suburban areas, but we're not there yet. And for example, um, this location um, is right at a, a VTA uh, stop, um, but they discontinued service because it, it wasn't getting enough ridership, uh, even with some apartments around it and, and such. So it, it takes some pretty high density. Um, and of course, there's areas of San Jose that are pretty sprawling. This is an example, so one of the, like the fingers that you see, the, the long narrow pieces in that map, or where there is uh, a good bus service, you know, uh, bus rapid, what do they call it, BRT, bus rapid transit, I think. Um, and so this is what it looks like today. There's, there's plenty of room for, for more uh, urbanizing there. Something uh, that we're also looking at right now is a proposed gift by the San Jose Light Tower Corporation. They want to create some sort of icon that, uh, you know, will be represent San Jose to the world. Um, and what they came up with is this uh, structure of poles that would be lighted. Um, and with the movement of the wind, it would generate the electricity needed to light it. Um, initially, the idea, I think, was to have fiberglass glowing, but they got an engineer to look at it and said, you know, you got to, <laughs> fiberglass doesn't work that way. You're going to need to make it steel. Our concern with it is it would be a huge glowing structure right next to the Los Gatos Creek, uh, Los Gatos Creek and the confluence with the uh, uh, Guadalupe River. Um, and you know, there's just no way of avoiding the light on the creek. And you know, it's unfortunate, but birds are sort of like moths that are drawn towards light. And so it's really disruptive to their migration patterns. And that's particularly bad along the riparian areas. And they propose this to be put in the uh, city park of Arena Green. Um, and in fact, they'd have to remove a bunch of uh, coast live oak trees to put it in there. Um, so we don't like this idea. And also it is right below the flight path of San Jose Airport where the, the, uh, the jetliners are coming in to land. And at this spot, right over this thing, the airliners are at 350 feet. Um, but this is proposed to be a 200 foot tower that's lighted um, and including, so, uh, they had some experience uh, with uh, the 9-11 memorial uh, light event that they did. And they had thousands of birds cir circulating, you know, congregating over it. So you can imagine if the birds congregate over this thing, they're right in the flight path of the airliners. So we don't think this thing makes sense. Um, we think for a hundred and, you know, they think that, that they may have to do a uh, hundred and fifty million dollars worth of fundraising to do this. That's going to be drying up the philanthropic uh, donations for other things um, that, you know, we think would be more valuable. That wouldn't be have impact on the environment. This is just one example of something that has been going on in San Jose. Um, there's been some work with uh, a guy who's led, you know, young people to help him out uh, doing some murals. Um, and so uh, anyway, this is something that we are active with at the moment uh, to, to try to convince the city to, to go in a different direction. Um, uh, okay, so, um, you know, I could go on if you want. I could go till the wee hours of the morning, um, but I thought I would give you guys a break uh, and call it quits and, and, and see if you have questions. Um, 
and if you know, I could go more, but uh, yeah, feel free to um, speak up and ask questions if you have them. Okay, well, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, you certainly covered uh, a lot of topics beyond uh, uh, the Open Space Authority, and it was interesting to hear the history uh, of that, which I didn't know. Um, so we have a few questions for for Dave. I've got it. Okay, well, it looks like I've, you covered all the bases. So, um, okay, Molly, go ahead. You've got, so the part of Coyote Valley that's protected now is just the northern part. And are we not concerned about the other parts of Coyote Valley? Yes, uh, we are concerned. Um, so you're right. Uh, the protected part is just uh, so, you know, going back, what the city's plan has been for a couple decades now is uh, to divide up Coyote Valley into three sections, the north, mid and south. Um, for the no north part, uh, they plan to bring in, you know, industrial uh, campuses, you know, basically uh, the IBM is already there, um, but uh, bring in, you know, tech companies, uh, basically the revenue generators of, uh, you know, businesses. And then the mid part, uh, it has currently been in what they called an urban reserve. So it, it's, it's zoned agriculture. There's, there's agriculture going on there now. Uh, but it had been planned to be housing and retail and the things to serve the people that uh, would work in, in the north part with these industrial campuses. Um, and so now that the um, industrial campuses aren't going to happen, the city isn't so eager to put people out there um, because it, you know what they really wanted was the revenues from those uh, businesses. Um, and, you know, housing is a drain. And so um, it is planned to uh, basically stay in agriculture. And currently, it, you know, it gets a little complicated because it's the mid part of Coyote Valley is run by the county of Santa Clara, uh, not the city, but it's in the city's sphere of influence, meaning that if they wanted to, they can um, annex it. And in fact, the urban growth boundary is currently includes the mid coyote. So what's going to happen is they're going to leave it as county. Uh, and the county is concerned that um, they want to continue to, to have it used for agriculture. There, there's concerns that the the parcel size gets subdivided and people build you know country villas and estates um you know rather than you know uh, um actually operating agriculture so the county is looking at some rules to maintain or increase the uh, size of the lots so that you know, it's currently 20 acres uh, minimum. Um, they're planning on changing that to be 40 acres minimum um, to, to help uh, agriculture stay viable. And to, there's, there, there's other plans. They, they have a, the, the Open Space Authority and um, the county work together on a plan to help agriculture become, you know, stay viable. Uh, and they have, they call it the agriculture plan. They just, I think they call it Santa Clara County agriculture plan. Um, and so it, it discusses these type of things, uh, maybe some zoning away so that um, houses don't, uh, in, you know, impact the, the agriculture land, ag agricultural lands because um, you know, once houses, even if it's just an adjacent neighbor, um, you know, they start having complaints about the noise and dust and, you know, if they're using chemicals and things. And so the county is looking at these things to conserve um, agriculture in the mid coyote. Uh, in, in the south coyote, 
It's currently designated uh, and is, is controlled by the city of San Jose um, for recreation and agriculture. So there's already, um, and, and there are a lot of greenhouses that have been built and, 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 and such, but it will stay as it is in agriculture and, and recreation. You, you have a question from Terry, you have your hand up. Yeah, hi. Um, could you talk a little bit more about um, burning? Uh, is it generally thought that prescribed burns on a regular basis um, are a good thing? Should we be you know, burning everything every, you know, in rotation every 20 years or whatever? And how does that interact with um, greenhouse gases and um, global warming and all that? Um, I, I'd like to know more about the yeah. thinking on that. Uh, well, yeah, it, it, it's, it's important. And you know, as I mentioned, you know, I tried to provide, I, I just think it's kind of interesting, but I tried to provide some context that actually, you know, the indigenous people that, you know, they, they had a culture that survived for 8,000 years doing prescribed burning um, to manage the land. And then we stopped doing that. We, you know, the Western culture, uh, you know, saw fire as a threat and started, you know, suppressing it. And unfortunately that has created created an excess of vegetation that uh, has encouraged more fires or, or more hotter, um, more destructive fires uh, because there's more fuel. Um, and so we've got a backlog of that. And then we also do have this terrible drought and, and warming uh, with climate change, which also increases the fire threat and so you're right. Um, we we do understand more and more that you know doing prescribed burns can help um, minimize the severity if if a fire does break out that's you know by accident or you know some other uh, cause um, you know and it's usually humans that are doing it. I think like eighty percent of the fires are caused by human activity. You know either a spark from a heavy equipment or, you know, fools with fireworks or something, you know. Um, but the fires that we had that were so severe last year were, were started by lightning, which is natural. Um, and naturally, um, the, these lands would have burned more often. And so with less fuel, they would burn, you know, not as hot um, and, and, you know, like, the, you know, ideally, you know, the fires gently burn the grasses without getting up into the canopy and destroying the forest, um, or maybe to help thin it out. So we've got this backlog. So, you know, it seems like we understand the right thing to do, but getting the resources and actually um, doing it seems to be a problem. But um, there is a backlog of need to do some prescribed burns, prescribed burns. Um, now different lands burn at different rates naturally. You know, the, the, the uh, chaparral will burn, you know, every 20 years, whereas some other grasslands, you know, historically would have burned, you know, every five or six years or something like that. And so, you know, there's some subtleties to it. But you're exactly right. Okay, so yeah, the prescribed burns cause a lot of smoke and particularly, um, you know, with so much of urbanization around California now, it's hard to have a fire without it impacting the health of people. Um, and so the, it is a problem, you know, there's a, that little park that I showed you early on that Guadalupe Oak Grove that I love so much. Um, we would love to get some prescribed burns in there but um, it's completely surrounded by suburbs and there's just the neighbors would or fear that it would get out of hand th that the conditions have to be just right where the air has to be calm where the smoke will go up uh, in a column and get up above you know the population and then disperse um, and so there are a lot of factors that make it really difficult but um, 
you know, in the long run, there's going to be less smoke and, and, you know, but it, it's a difficult thing to prescribe some bad smoke for people, you know, because it's better than, you know, the alternative. Um, but I, you know, I know this, the, the state is, recognizes it. And, you know, if you talk to, um, you know, the conversations that I hear about people that um, are in charge of, of uh, you know, Cal Fire, you know, they'll say the right things, but what actually happens doesn't, you know, we're, we're way behind. And, and it just, um, you know, I don't know what, maybe it'll, there'll be more pressure to do that in, in the coming years. But um, yeah, um, in, 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 the, in the long run, the right thing to do is to, you know, thin, thin out the grasses and such uh, with prescribed burns. Uh, we got a, another couple of raised hands. Oh, mine is still raised, but Kelly, uh, you wanna ask your question? Yeah, I had a question about the, um, how far open space extends north. Um, I notice it looks like it stops at Albiso and it doesn't go, the total county line is up to Palo Alto. So does open space cover up to there? Or is it stop or is it, because you seem to be focusing mostly on coyote. Here. Yeah, uh, it, it does a very observant, <laughs> good question. Uh, it does cover most of Santa Clara County, but you're right. There's the, the northwestern part. Uh, it does not cover. Uh, but the good news is the reason why it doesn't cover that area is because it's covered by the Mid Peninsula Open Space District, also known as Mid Pen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all of Santa Clara County and San, ben and San Mateo County are covered by uh, an open space district. I, had, I just wanted to point out one other thing. You had Mothers Out Front listed as a group that also has been very active in pushing that coyote to be a preserve area and, um, and, and also for reach laws and they show up at the city councils and almost every councilor has been inundated with comments from them about these things to keep, to get um, more buildings like for instance, commercial buildings uh, new ones, new constructions into mostly uh, no more gas. Just, <laughs> I just wanted. Yeah, you know, thank you. You're you're exactly right. Uh, you know, I I have already taken a lot of your precious time. Thank you. Um, so I didn't get into the details on uh, on a, a lot of it, but uh, yeah, w w uh, we at the Sierra Club work a lot uh, with uh, Mothers Out Front. I really like the 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 people. Uh, involved with the, the mm -hmm. organization and you know frankly as a Sierra Club member you know our biggest threat is the fact that there's so many good other uh, environmental organizations that people can participate with including Mothers Out Front they you're right they do some really great work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Well thank you for uh a very thorough analysis of our uh, various conservation issues in the in, in the county here. Um, I would like to uh, mention again. Uh, I didn't have the date, but the next Zoom um, we'll, we'll have a letter out on this. But it'll be on the fifteenth of June, which is a Tuesday. There's just some conflicts, and Rob Means will be speaking to us about. Um, his uh, new organization to support, uh, um, they call it uh, personal rapid transit. They're, they're basically small elevated vehicles that can take four or five people around and he, he's trying to get that going and Neil Peters has got some very clever uh, things going for him there. Uh, and then those of you who are interested perhaps in uh, going to the Sierra Club California fund, fundraiser. Just just put your uh, email in the in the chat, um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the information. Uh, so thank you all for coming, and uh, thank you very much, Dave, for a very uh, 
interesting and, and extensive uh, dis discussion of things. All right, everybody you, take care. Stay healthy. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.